We've now arrived at a graph with an aggregate demand curve that tells us the relationship between the equilibrium level of GDP and the price level, and an aggregate supply curve that in the short run is relatively flat to the left of the natural level of GDP where prices are sticky, but gets increasingly steep as we move to the right of the natural level of GDP. That economy reaches its long-run equilibrium when the price level settles to a point where at that price level, the equilibrium level of GDP, right off of the aggregate demand curve, is equal to the natural level of GDP. Now so far, we've primarily asked what happens if there's a drop in aggregate demand, which causes a downward or leftward shift in the aggregate demand curve. Well, in that case, we move down that short-run aggregate supply curve and we see a drop in output, a recession, but relatively little change in prices because prices are sticky. Now we want to ask, what happens if there's a boost in aggregate demand, if the aggregate demand curve shifts up or to the right? Well, in that case, we're going to move up that short-run aggregate supply curve and we'll see increases in output, albeit at a relatively modest rate, and increases in prices. But before we get there, we could ask, how could it even be that an economy can produce above the natural level of GDP? After all, we define the natural level of GDP as real GDP when we're at full employment. How can we do any better than that? And to understand that, we have to understand what we mean by full employment. Full employment does not mean there's no unemployment. Because in any dynamic modern economy, at any given time, jobs are being lost and new jobs are being created. So you might leave your job to look for a new, better job, or you might have lost your job because your job's been eliminated. But new jobs are being created at the same time. For people who've lost their job, it'll take some time to find that new job. And over that period of time, they are unemployed. They're looking for work and not currently working. So even at the natural level of GDP, we have some level of unemployment. And that level of unemployment is called the natural level of unemployment, and it's associated with the natural unemployment rate. So the natural unemployment rate is simply the unemployment rate at the natural level of GDP. And it emerges because it takes time to find new work if you lost your job. Now, the level of that unemployment rate, the natural run unemployment rate, depends on lots of factors. It depends on labor laws. How hard is it to hire a new worker? It depends on the generosity of unemployment benefits. The more generous unemployment benefits are, the longer people might take to find that next new job, because in the meantime, they're covered by unemployment insurance. So a number of factors go into what exactly that natural level of unemployment is. But there is some natural level of unemployment, even at the natural level of GDP. So now let's ask what happens as we push aggregate demand up. When we see that boost in aggregate demand, we see an increase in GDP and an increase in prices. In other words, we see inflation. So how does that inflation emerge? Well, remember, we were at full employment. Now we have to draw more people into employment. We have to get those people who are looking for work to accept work faster than they did before or draw new people who were previously not looking for work into the labor force. The only way to do that is to offer higher wages. And as wages go up, there's upward pressure on prices because firms are going to pass those increased wage costs on to consumers. So that leads that to that upward pressure in prices to that inflation as we push the economy beyond the natural level of GDP. That observation led economists in the 1960s to conclude that there's a trade-off between the unemployment rate and inflation. 
If you want to achieve a lower unemployment rate, lower than the natural rate of unemployment, you can push the economy beyond the natural level of GDP through expansionary government policy. But that'll come at a cost. It'll come at the cost of higher prices or inflation. So that trade-off that economists identified in the 1960s became known as the Phillips curve. So imagine that we were currently at the natural unemployment rate and at 0% inflation. Now we want to push that unemployment rate down. So we want to pump the economy through expansionary government policy, push aggregate demand out and produce more. As a result, the unemployment rate is going to drop below the natural level. So we'll see a drop in the unemployment rate. But at the same time, prices are going to rise. So inflation is going to rise. So we might get to a point where we're at a 5% unemployment rate. I mean a 5% inflation rate, but a lower unemployment rate than the one we started with. So we see in this picture a downward sloping relationship emerge between inflation and unemployment. Economists then came to policymakers and said, look, we can tell you that there's a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. You can push unemployment below the natural level, but the price you're going to pay is inflation. So depending on how comfortable you are with inflation, that'll determine how far you want to push this process. So the Phillips curve, this trade-off between inflation and unemployment that economists uncovered in the 1960s doesn't tell you what the right policy answer is. It just tells you that there is a trade-off and it leaves it up to policymakers to figure out where in fact we should settle on that Phillips curve.